So earlier this week at the Launch Darkly Lunch and Learn panel discussion here in New York City, I had theorized that you could use multivariate feature flags to power lightweight administrative features in an application. At the time, I had envisioned using a string-based multivariate feature flag and essentially shoehorning uh, JSON or JavaScript object notation payloads into said feature flag. What I didn't realize is that LaunchDarkly actually has native support for JSON types, specifically for arrays and objects. So you can see here I have a variation or a feature flag called operations IP blacklist and I have variations here and I'm defining the variations as arrays, not as JSON strings, right? I don't have to go in and, and start escaping these values. Uh, I can provide them the same way that I would define an array directly in my JavaScript code or, or what other type of language I might be using. And uh, this affords a great degree of flexibility and kind of gives us the ability to use the LaunchDarkly platform as a way to implement lightweight administrative features, even those that are data intensive. So imagine the idea that we wanted to blacklist IPs or whitelist IPs. What we would have to do if we weren't using LaunchDarkly is you know, create a database, create an administrative UI, create security around said UI. Uh, in our application, we'd have to create some sort of data abstraction layer that calls the database, that stores the IP. We'd have to consume that in our application. Uh, you know, none of that is terribly complicated, but it is tedious and it requires human resource allocation and is very likely not the core goal of your product. So I wanted to take a look at how we might be able to leverage LaunchDarkly to, uh, to implement some, some uh, lightweight administrative features. So here is a demo. And inside of this demo, we're going to be using LaunchDarkly, of course. Um, and what we're just going to be doing is every second, we're going to be making requests to this mock HTTP handler, giving it a static IP address. And we're going to check inside this handler whether or not this IP address is being blocked. So let's jump down here to the handler. Uh, here's our LaunchDarkly client. We're calling the variation. We're asking, again, for that operations IP blacklist. In this case, I'm just providing a static key for the user, the user identifier, because I don't need to roll this out gradually. I want all IP addresses to be blocked across all users at the same time. Um, there's no need for this to be non-static. And then here's our default value. And notice that I'm providing the default value as an array. Again, this is not uh, us trying to shoehorn JSON strings into a LaunchDarkly feature flag. This is native support for complex array and object structures in LaunchDarkly. So our default value is a complex array object or array structure to use as the fallback should LaunchDarkly not yet be available. And then here you can see again that we're just treating that IP blacklist that I'm getting back from my variation method as an array and we're checking to see if the incoming IP is part of that list. So let's go jump into our uh, terminal here and we'll kick this off. And we can see that I'm currently allowing the IP address 192.168.10.50 because it's not in one of our lists. Now let's go ahead and see what we can block on the fly. So let's grab this IP address and let's leave this open. Let me jump into the launch directly and I'll try to keep this open here at the same time. So we're in variations. I now want to add a variation. I could just change the existing one, but I like the idea of having this uh, be sort of an immutable situation. So let's just get the other one that was there, 192.10.0.1, right? And now what we want to do is add the one that we just copied out of our application. And let's just call this the 2018.06.28b as of now. And let's go ahead and save the changes. And now if we jump back into our application, and again, let me move this over, and let's go from serving to as of now. So this is the one we just created. I'm going to save the changes. And there, immediately, the new array structure, the complex array structure, was streamed to our client in Node.js, where Node.js immediately picked it up and started blocking this IP address. And we can see if we go to none and then save the changes, we'll immediately get sent back to, uh, to allowing that IP address to come through the application control flow. So the, the mechanics of this demo are really not any different from the mechanics of my previous LaunchDarkly demos, 
right? We're creating a variation in LaunchDarkly's dashboard. We're changing it. Those changes are being streamed to the client. The client's picking them up and applying them to the application logic. The, the facet of this exploration that I think is really different from everything else is the fact that the values coming back here are not simple. They are complex objects. They're objects, they're arrays, they're data intensive data structures, which I know that just sounds silly to say, but the fact that they're not strings, they're not booleans, they're not numbers, but they're open-ended structures, right, that it could have numbers, arrays, booleans inside them, could have additional arrays, could have nested objects, that really provides a degree of flexibility that we haven't seen before and allows us to now build very complicated data intensive features on top of infrastructure that is essentially being entirely provided by launch darkly. I mean, look at this. We have now a, a let's call it simple, but effective IP blacklisting feature, which really amounted to, you know, one or two lines of code. That's the only thing we had to write. Everything else in this entire feature has been provided by launch darkly, right? We have our feature flag. We have our variations uh, with the complex structures. We have a security model around the LaunchDarkly dashboard. We have uh, streaming of the data from the LaunchDarkly dashboard to the client. We have the data access provided by the LaunchDarkly client. All of the infrastructure that we would have had to build for this administrative feature, we can now build using LaunchDarkly multivariate complex data structure feature flags. And again, just one or two lines of code. And I'm not suggesting that you replace all of your administrative features with this kind of feature flag driven infrastructure, uh, but I am suggesting that it is a possibility and it depends on what you want to focus on as far as your uh, efforts within a company.